Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. What settings in Microsoft Flight Simulator will give you the best performance and graphics on your system? I don't know. Well, we're going to go through all the steps coming up on today's episode of 2020 Flight Simmers. Welcome back. Before we jump into the video, I just have one disclaimer. Everyone's system is different, and the settings I use for my system, well heck, you already know that, that's why we're going through this video. So let's get started. In today's video, I will walk you through all the steps to help you get the best graphics and performance settings in Microsoft Flight Simulator. During our testing today, we will be utilizing the built-in FPS tool to help us get a gauge on what we need to adjust. Now don't worry, if you're unfamiliar with how to get this tool to populate, I'll go through all of that in just a moment, as well as some of the things to look out for in the tool itself. Throughout today's video, I will only be going over Microsoft Flight Simulator settings. Now I've done a ton of videos for tweaks and NVIDIA control panel settings and DLSS, DLL file settings. I've done an entire gamut of tutorial videos on how to get the best performance and graphics out of Microsoft Flight Simulator. But one thing occurred to me just recently, I've never shown everyone after you've implemented these things, how to set up the Microsoft Flight Simulator settings for your PC. Now, if you have any questions throughout today's video, please leave them down below in the comments section and I'll get right back with you. If you enjoyed today's content and find it useful, make sure to hit that subscribe, tick on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. It is greatly appreciated. Now, before we get into the Microsoft Flight Simulator settings, I first want to show you how to access the FPS tool because that will be our main focus to adjusting our settings accordingly. First thing that we need to do is to head up to the Options tab, go down to General Options, and then we're going to head over to the Developers tab on the left-hand side. Once we're there, we're going to turn on Developer Mode at the top, and then head all the way up to the very top of your screen. You will have another list of menus. We're then going to click on the Debug tab, and then go all the way down to FPS, give that a left click, and voila, your FPS counter will populate on the right-hand side. Once we're done with that, we can hit Apply and Save at the bottom, and now we're good to go. All right, so now that we have the FPS tool populated, let's go over a couple things here before we spawn into the sim. Now, I've got a couple caveats to today's tutorial, and that is, one, we will not be going over any frame generation, as frame generation is more of icing on the cake, in my opinion. And secondly, anyone that is using the DLDSR factors inside of the NVIDIA control panel, I would recommend to turn that back to default for now until we get through today's tutorial. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, then great, then you do not have your DLDSR factors turned on. Lastly, if you're using any auto FPS tool, you want to make sure that all of those are turned off at this point as well. So who is this video geared towards? This will be for anyone that is using any graphics card. So if you're an AMD user or an NVIDIA user, a GTX user or an RTX user, it really doesn't matter. So now with that out of the way, let's go over the FPS tool. At the very top of the tool, we have our frames per second. Below that will give us some resolutions. Below that will give us our limiting factor. So this will tell us what is limiting our performance inside of the sim, whether it be our GPU or our CPU. Now, please don't let this alarm you as you will always be limited by something. I've gone over this many times, but your computer or your PC cannot run to infinity. Below that, we'll give our main thread latency. Now also keep in mind that latency directly corresponds to frames per second. The higher the latency, the lower your frames. The lower the latency, the higher your frames will be. We'll then skip over the next four options here below main thread because they're not going to be of importance throughout today's tutorial, and we're going to skip down to the GPU section. In the GPU section, this will also tell us our latency for our GPU rendering. 
the main thread or our CPU and our GPU latency are going to be the main focus of us gauging what settings to use for Microsoft Flight Simulator. The next thing we'll take a look at is in the very bottom box in the gray section, and this is going to be our GPU memory. This will also play a big factor in whether we're getting stutters inside of the sim. On the right hand side, this gives us our total GPU memory or VRAM that's on our GPU. And on the left hand side will give us the VRAM that is being used currently on our GPU. Okay, so now that you're an expert in reading the FPS tool, let's spawn into the simulator. But there's a couple things that we have to do for this as well, because we wanna keep all of our testing as equal as possible. So first things first, we're gonna open up the world map and then we're gonna choose an aircraft of your liking. Now this could be any aircraft. The point is that we need to keep the exact same aircraft throughout all of our testing that we're gonna be doing today. Once you have selected your aircraft, go over to the flight conditions and we're gonna give that a left click. Once we're in here, we also need to reduce our variables to get the most accurate readings possible. So for that, we wanna make sure that we turn off multiplayer and we're also going to make sure that we're using clear skies. Lastly, we wanna choose a specific time of day. Now again, this can be any time that you choose, but for all of our testing, we're gonna choose the exact same time. The last thing that we wanna to do to reduce the amount of variables that are in the sim, we're gonna go into the traffic menu, and then you wanna turn down all of these settings that are in here. These settings can also give us variable effects in the sim, especially with worker density and airport vehicles driving around. That we do not want any of that going on during our testing today. So make sure we turn all of those off and hit apply and save. The next thing that we're gonna do is choose an airport in which we're gonna spawn into. Now for choosing an airport, I would definitely not choose the easiest airport to spawn into meaning the least amount of load, but I probably wouldn't pick an airport like JFK because that's gonna be the highest amount of load on your system. So for today's demonstration, I'll use Houston, K-I-A-H. Also, we wanna choose a specific parking spot for our testing. We wanna choose the exact same parking spot every single time we wanna do our testing. Now for this, I generally do not like to spawn in at a gate, and that's because we're gonna be staring directly at a building, and that's gonna impact our performance, most likely positively. So I wanna get as accurate as possible, so I'm gonna pick a spot that's gonna be out in the open, so we're gonna see everything from the cockpit. For this, I'm gonna choose ramp 102 over here on the left-hand side, and then we'll hit departure. Okay, so we're now spawned into the airport. And lastly, in keeping with the same theme of non-changing variables, you wanna make sure that you use the exact same camera position each time. Okay, before we start making any changes, I wanna show you what a good balanced system is gonna look like on the FPS counter. Now specifically, if we take note of the limited section, you will see that we are bouncing off between main thread and GPU. It's kind of hard to see that, but it's bouncing between our GPU and our main thread. That is gonna be a perfectly balanced system, meaning that neither our CPU or our GPU is rendering faster than one another. They are both at about the same exact speed. Now also keep in mind that I am not using VSync for today's tutorial, as you wanna turn off any VSync or any frame limiting programs that you may have running. Now ultimately, you may not be able to get your system to be bouncing back and forth between main thread and GPU, and that may also go down to how the system was built. If you have a very high-end GPU, like a 4090, and let's say an i5 CPU, well, you can't expect both of those to be equaling out as far as performance. Now, when it comes down to a system in balance as far as hardware, obviously there's nothing we can do to change that unless you change out some pieces of hardware. 
But ultimately, we're going to try to get the best performance with the settings that we have to balance them out as best as possible. Now, when we're looking at the main thread latency compared to our GPU latency, you always want your main thread latency lower than your GPU latency. If your GPU latency is lower than your CPU latency, so let's say your GPU is rendering at 5 milliseconds and your main thread is rendering at 13 milliseconds, then what will happen is your GPU is going to end up waiting for those frames to be rendered by your CPU to be sent to your GPU so that they can be displayed on your monitor, which then will create a stutter. Okay, so now that we have gone over the FPS counter and what are some things to look out for, let's hop into the graphics settings and start manipulating things in there. Now, the most important thing here is we're going to start with our full screen resolution, whatever your native monitor resolution is. Now, one thing that goes along with full screen resolution is the type of monitor that you're going to be using. Now, this also goes back to having a balanced system when it comes to all of your hardware specs. So if you have an RTX 3060, it's not going to push a 4K monitor all that well. I just can't do it, Captain. I do it time for time. And the last thing you want to do is downscale your 4K monitor to a 2K monitor like I'm doing. Now there will be exceptions to the rule with no matter what I'm going to be going over today, I'm just trying to give you a baseline as to where to start from. So we're going to set our full screen resolution to our monitor's full screen spec. We're also going to turn our anti-aliasing on TAA to start. Your render scaling, keep that at 100%, 100% on the sharpening, Again, make sure your V-Sync is off as well as reflex low latency. We do not want any of this to play a factor in our readings that we're getting. Once you have gone through the process of getting the best settings for your system, then you can go back in and turn on V-Sync and NVIDIA reflex low latency. Now, we're also going to start in DirectX 11. So if you are someone who is using DX12, go ahead and pause the video switch to DX11, and then reboot your system. Once we're done with this, you may find that DX12 is the best solution for your system, but we're going to go through this systematically. Below this, we have a global rendering quality. Now, I don't necessarily recommend to switch and use a global rendering quality because if you are someone who has manipulated the config file settings for your various post-processing, this will reset all of those back to default. So to prevent that, we're going to go through each of the settings below and switch them into medium independently. But there's a couple that we don't necessarily need to do that for because it's not going to play a big impact on performance. Terrain level of detail, we will keep that at 100. Below that, we have off-screen terrain pre-caching. I like to set this on ultra. The reason for that is if you have this set on anything lower than that, as you're turning around in the cockpit, you will notice a drastic decrease in your FPS. And that's because it has to reload all of the imagery that's around us. So by keeping this on ultra, I found for my system, reduces a lot of stuttering when you're turning around. And again, there's exceptions to the rule, but for today, we're going to leave this on ultra. Below that, terrain vector data, we will also leave on ultra as this does not have any direct impact on performance. Below that for buildings, we will set that on medium. Trees to medium. Grass and bushes, we'll set to medium. Objects level of detail, we'll set at 100. Again, if you're using an auto FPS tool that auto adjusts your object level of detail, make sure that's turned off. Volumetric clouds, we will set that at medium. For texture resolution, this is one of those settings that we need to restart our simulator for the settings to take effect. Now, I've also gone over this setting in my VR guide, so whatever you have your PC set to in your texture resolution, you must also need to set that in VR as well. And that's because you need to restart the sim for these to take effect. 
Oh, and I didn't mention this earlier. This guide will be good for PC and VR. You're just going to take the exact same steps we're going to work through here and apply that to VR. When it comes down to texture resolution, this is going to mainly affect your VRAM on your GPU. That's the number at the very bottom of the FPS counter that I went over earlier. So for today, we're going to leave texture resolution on high. If you are someone that has a GPU with 6 to 8 gigabytes of VRAM, you may want to switch this to medium to start. If you have your set on medium, leave it set on medium for now. Below that, we have anisotropic filtering. I have this set to off only because I have it activated in the NVIDIA control panel. Now, for both anisotropic filtering and texture super sampling, we're going to turn these on mid-range, which would be about the medium setting. So for today's demonstration, I'll just activate my anisotropic filtering so you get an idea of what's going on. Below that, we have texture synthesis. This is another one of those settings that really does not affect performance, so we're going to leave that on high or ultra for now. Below that, we have water waves, so we'll turn that to medium. Shadow maps. Now, if you have gone in your config file and already had set this to your 4K settings, then you will have to go back in there and switch that back up once we get through with the video. Contact shadows, we're going to turn those down to medium. Windshield effects down to medium. Ambient occlusion down to medium. Cube map reflections, we'll put that at about the medium level. Ray marched reflections down on medium. Light shafts down on medium. The rest of these are personal preference, but for this tutorial, what I would recommend to do is to turn off all of the remaining options that we have here below, and then at the very bottom, keep your glass cockpit refresh rate at medium. Once we're done with the tutorial, then you can go ahead and turn back on any of these settings here below. I just don't want them to affect any of the readings that we're getting within the simulator. All right, so now that we are back in the simulator, let's take a look at my FPS counter at the very top. Now, one thing that you're going to notice in the limited section is we are limited by main thread pretty much predominantly now. As you'll see, my GPU latency at the bottom is between 6 and 7 milliseconds, and my main thread is 12 to almost 13 milliseconds. Now, why did this happen? Well, that's because a lot of the settings that we had turned down to medium in our settings are directly impacting our GPU performance and not our CPU performance. The main factor in CPU performance is going to be our level of detail levels. As we increase the level of detail, our CPU main thread will then increase. If we decrease the level of detail levels, our CPU main thread latency will decrease. Now lastly, we wanna take a look at the very bottom in the GPU memory section to make sure we are not maxing out our VRAM. And I generally like to keep this about no more than 80 or 90% of VRAM usage. If you exceed 80 or 90% of VRAM, then what you can do to help lower that is to either reduce your render scaling or lower your texture resolution inside of the simulator. Okay, so now that we have everything set to medium, what we wanna do now before we start testing for performance is we wanna test for image quality. So to do that, we want to get some power in the aircraft and we want to turn on the avionics. Do not change your camera position during this process. So now let's take a look at our glass screens in the cockpit. Now, I would also say it probably would be a good idea to start off with an aircraft with glass screens, whether it be a GNS 530 or the 1000 or an airliner. And that's because some of your analog gauges will look differently than your glass screens when you're switching between TAA and DLSS. Now, I know it's going to be hard to remember what you're seeing on your screen. So what you could do is open up the snipping tool inside of Windows and take a screenshot of your display. So if you go down to your search bar here and type in snip, the snipping tool will populate here, and then you can select new, 
highlight, and then you can take a screenshot of the actual display itself. Now, the other thing we could do here is if you take a full screenshot, then it will document all of your specs that are in your FPS tool as well. Okay, so now that you have that documented, let's go back into our options menu. From here, we are now going to activate DLSS. Now, we have a couple different options for DLSS. When you're in DLSS mode, you can also take advantage of the AMD Fidelity FX sharpening to help increase the clarity of your dash as well as your glass screens. Now, I know it may go against everything that you may think because it says AMD, but again, I have helped but again, I have helped people and increasing this on their system gave them better sharpening effect. So you could also try that as well. First, we're going to start with DLAA. This is going to be the most taxing DLSS option that there is available. But it's going to give you the best image quality that DLSS has to offer. Now, depending on your PC and your hardware, you may not be able to run DLAA in DLSS mode because your frame rate might just be too low. But because I'm getting 70 frames, I'm going to try this out. Now, if you're only getting 30 frames, then DLAA is probably not going to work out for you because DLAA is actually going to hit your system harder than TAA does. But we're going to run through the steps. So we're going to hit apply and save and jump back into the sim. But like I said, this is not about performance per se. We really want to hone in on our graphics. So take a good look at your screens now, as well as any of the writing that is on the dash. Take a screenshot of it because we're going to need to be able to compare these once we finish testing the various DLSS settings. All right, so now that you know what this looks like in DLAA, we're going to go back in to General Options, and we're going to now switch to Quality. Now, if you were someone that has quite low FPS, Quality may just give you that boost you're looking for in frame rate. So now that we have set our DLSS to Quality, I can start to see that my images out in the distance are starting to get blurry, as well as all the glass screens in the cockpit. And again, you'll take a screenshot of your image, documenting all of your FPS settings up here above. Now, let's say that you are someone in between. So you tried your DLSS DLAA setting, and you're like, wow, this is better than TAA. And believe me, I have helped people through this process and found that DLAA looks better than TAA. But let's say that your system just cannot perform well with DLAA, yet TAA is also still too taxing on your system. And you switch it to quality only to find that, well, it's now hard to read some of your gauges, your screens, and some of the signage that's on the taxiways. What you can do in this respect is to activate ultra quality mode for DLSS, and then you can try that. The easiest way that I've found to turn on ultra quality mode is to use the NVIDIA Profile Inspector. This is going to be the only setting that I'm going to take you out of Microsoft Flight Sim for, and that's because we just don't have the capability within. Now keep in mind that quality setting in DLSS is going to render your image at 0.6666, so what you can do in the NVIDIA Profile Inspector is up that to 0.75 or 0.80. I'll post a link down below in the description on how to do that, or you can click up here. So now that you have gone through and tested all of the various anti-aliasing methods from TAA to DLSS, we now need to figure out which anti-aliasing method is going to give you the best image quality. So now go through all of your screenshots and find out which method gives you the best quality. Once you have made that decision, we can then go back into your PC settings, and then we're gonna to switch to the anti-aliasing method that suit your monitor the best. If you are not able to choose the anti-aliasing method that gives you the best image quality, 
due to performance issues, then what you would want to do is choose the anti-aliasing method that gives you the best image quality for the performance. I would try not to go anywhere under 30 frames per second. Anything over 30 frames, you should be okay. Now, one of the other things that you will notice when we are switching between TAA and DLSS is in TAA mode, we have a render resolution upscaling method, and in DLSS, we do not. I'll show you how that may become of importance here in a little while. All right, so now that we're back in the cockpit, as you can see in TAA mode, my glass screens look much, much better. So now that we have the correct anti-aliasing setting for your PC, we now need to start manipulating some of our other graphics settings to help balance everything out. Now keep in mind that if your GPU latency at this point is higher than your main thread, then this may be the settings that you want to stick with. Because ultimately, we're trying to get the main thread and the GPU latency about the same. But I will say, once you go over a certain latency point, you start getting diminishing returns. In any case, if you're looking at your FPS counter right now and notice that your GPU latency is a little bit higher or much higher than your main thread, then you are not going to be turning up any of your graphics settings higher than they currently are. And that's because any higher of the settings will just create a higher GPU latency. The only way to reduce the GPU latency at this point is either to turn all of your graphics settings down to low, or you can turn your resolution down some inside of the sim. For instance, I have a 4K monitor and I'm rendering at a 2K spec inside of the sim. However, decreasing the clarity inside of the sim. Now also keep in mind that the monitor that you're using will also play a big factor in your GPU latency. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Now currently we are running at a resolution of 2560 by 1440. The monitor that I'm using is actually a 4K monitor. But let's go ahead and turn this up to 4K settings, and let's take a look at the FPS counter now. Now one thing that you will notice, because I've now upscaled the resolution to my monitor's native resolution, take a look at the limited by factor in the FPS tool. I'm now bouncing between GPU and CPU limited. So that means actually at this point right now with all of my settings, it's perfectly balanced. But that also means that I cannot increase any of my other graphic settings. So here's where the balancing act comes into play. And there's a little bit of give and take that's gonna be needed to get my desired effect. So for me, I'm gonna turn this back down to 100. You could also use this setting to downscale slightly if you need to lower your GPU latency. And then hit apply and save. Now because I've done that, that gives me a bunch of GPU overhead so that I can now start turning up some of my other graphic settings. So now what you can do is start going through all of your different settings and first trying to decide on, well, what's more important to you? Well, if you like to fly very high in the sky, then having buildings, trees, and grass on anything more than medium may not really mean that much to you. But if you are someone who is flying very low all the time, or you just like to have that detail, then you could turn up your grass, trees, and buildings, hit apply and save, and then go back in the simulator and see what kind of readings you're getting on your FPS tool. Now keep in mind, everything that we're gonna be looking at from here on out is gonna be performance related. We've already picked the best setting to give the best graphical image to us. Now we're just increasing the textures that are on all the other objects. Um, now one other thing going back to render scaling that I mentioned earlier, 
that this also has a direct impact on your VRAM usage. This also goes the same in VR. The higher the rendering, the more VRAM you're going to be using. So we go back in the sim, you will see now that my GPU memory is almost four gigabyte. So your render scaling as well as the texture resolution will play a big role of the GPU memory. As you can see, we just dropped off one gig of memory. Now don't worry, I know some of you might say, well, wait a minute, you've skipped over DX11 and DX12. No, we're going to come back to the DX version once we get all of these other settings dialed in to get us the best performance for our system. Once we have all of these settings dialed in below to get us the best performance, then we'll switch into DX12 and see what that does to our performance level. Now again, I can't stress this enough. If your GPU latency is already higher than your main thread latency, turning up any of these settings below will increase your GPU latency. Now that also goes for your main thread latency when you're trying to dial in your terrain level of detail. If I were to turn this up to let's say 200, hit apply, now take a look at my main thread latency. I'm jumping around anywhere between, wow. Yeah, now I'm jumping around anywhere between 14 and over 20 milliseconds of main thread latency. Also take note of my FPS had drastically decreased from the, what, 75 or 70. Now let's say, for instance, your FPS is sufficient at 60 frames that's still some great FPS. So let's say you want to keep your terrain level of detail at 200. Well, now, because your main thread is now about 15 milliseconds, we really need to increase our GPU load to get that up to about 15 milliseconds as well. So we're going to go through the rest of these settings here. But even after you max out all of these settings, you still may not be able to get to that 15 milliseconds. At that point is when we can introduce the DLDSR factors, or we can upscale the image to a higher resolution to introduce a little bit more latency on the GPU. So like I said, we're trying to dial in these settings, giving us a little bit of overhead so that when we get in these populated areas, when we get into a highly dense traffic area, or we get into a huge weather system, that it's not going to create a stutter and it's not going to decrease our performance that much. All right, so now let's hop back in here and start adjusting some other settings. Now again, we can't adjust volumetric clouds because I don't have any clouds populated, so we'll just go down to the next option that we have, and that would be anisotropic filtering. So for this, if you're on medium, turn it all the way up to 16x. And then the same goes for texture super sampling. If you're at 4x4, turn that up to 8x8. Hit apply and save, and then go back into the sim and check your readings on your FPS tool. So if we look at our GPU latency now, we have gone up just a little bit more from where we were, but we are still not at the same as our CPU latency. So now I know we still have some more overhead on the GPU. Let's hop back into our settings again. Now water waves, I'm going to leave them on medium for right now because I don't have any water around me. And I will be able to test this once I get near a coastline. Same goes for clouds. Once you populate some clouds, then you can manipulate your volumetric cloud detail depending on the readings that you're getting in the FPS tool. So we're going to head down to shadow maps. I'm going to turn that all the way up and I'm going to turn up my terrain shadows all the way up. Hit apply and save and we're going to head back into the sim. Again, take a look at our FPS tool and our GPU latency is finally getting up near 10 milliseconds. Now also keep notice of every time we are increasing some of these graphic settings, our FPS is decreasing as we're going. And this will also be a balancing act because if you already have low FPS, 
you don't want to increase any of those graphics settings to try to increase your GPU latency. I'm able to increase a lot of the settings that impact my GPU to increase the latency to help bring it closer to my main thread. But if your system does not have that capability and you have low frames per second, then you can't increase all of your graphics settings because you don't have the FPS overhead. So what you would need to do is to decrease your main thread. In this case, you could do one of two things. Either you could reduce your terrain level of detail, or you can reduce the render scaling inside of the sim. So if you're at 4K, you can render at 2K. If you're at 2K, you can decrease your render scaling just slightly. Now, just for sake of demonstration, what I've done is I turned down my level of detail all the way to 10 and my object level of detail all the way down to 10. I want to show you how this is going to help bring down my main thread latency. Now, as you can see here, I've reduced my main thread latency from 12 all the way down to about 9 milliseconds. And as you take a look at the limited by factor at the top, I am now flashing back and forth between GPU and CPU. So they are both operating just about the same. Now for your system, if you have more of a mid-tier CPU, this is going to make a greater impact on the latency of your CPU up here. So now if we take a look at the GPU latency, we still have some overhead here. So what we can do is to crank up some more of our settings to help bring my GPU latency a little bit higher. Again, we'll go to Contact Shadows, turn that on Ultra. Windshield Effects is going to be another one that you'll need to test during a rainstorm or something like that. So we can hit Apply and Save and go back. So it looks like we still have a little bit more overhead on my GPU, but we're getting closer to my main thread latency. Ambient Occlusion, we'll get that on Ultra. Cube Map Reflections, we'll turn that all the way up. Hit Apply and Save. Let's go back in and retest. So as we can see, those two settings really didn't do much for our GPU latency in rising at any. So we can go back in and make a couple more changes. Ray March Reflections, we'll turn those on Ultra. And Light Shafts, we'll turn those on Ultra as well. This is another setting that you're going to have to test during dark conditions. Um, because this isn't really going to play a factor unless you have your lights on in the dark. And again, we'll hit Apply and Save, and go back in. Now if we take a look at the FPS tool, my GPU latency is almost up there with my main thread latency. I've got it as close as I possibly can here. And you can start to see the limited by starting to switch between GPU and CPU. My FPS is still quite high. My GPU, I still have a little bit of overhead, so I can still crank up some of my settings here. If I take a look at the GPU memory, I'm still only using three gigabyte of memory out of 11, so I've got plenty more to go there as well. I still need to increase my GPU consumption. So to do that, I can use the render scaling option right here and hit apply and save. Now if I go back in, that is pretty much perfect. We are bouncing back and forth between limited by main thread and limited by CPU. We have no red spikes and that's because our GPU latency is just right on par with our main thread. So now, if I were to take that a little bit further, let's just show you what will happen here. If I were to increase that to 150, which again is my monitor's um, native resolution, then that would bring my GPU all the way up to about 16, 15 milliseconds, which would probably be perfect if I want to use 200% level of detail as the main thread latency was right around 15 to 16 milliseconds.
Now you can also take note of all of these little yellow blips that are in the GPU section here. Now that is because we have turned up our resolution just a little bit too much. Now if you're someone that's using DLSS, either DLAA or quality or ultra quality, you're not going to have this option to be able to manipulate some of the render scaling. So in your case, you can manipulate the DLSS render scaling inside the NVIDIA Profile Inspector to help increase or decrease your GPU load. So now we get into the part of the video. For those of you who are using DLDSR, here's where you could turn that back on again if your GPU latency is still lower than your main thread. Then try to turn on your DLDSR and that will bring up your GPU latency. If we take a look at the GPU memory at the very bottom, we're still only at about 3.54 gigabytes. So what that means, I could go back in to my texture resolution and set this to ultra, and then that would give me even a better image quality on my screen, and that's only because I have the overhead here. If my GPU memory was maxed out, then you don't want to increase your texture resolution to ultra or high, you may need to bring it back one if you're maxing out your GPU memory. There are a couple ways in which you can reduce your VRAM usage. One, you can reduce your render scaling, you can reduce your terrain level of detail, or you can reduce the texture resolution option. Okay, so now that you have found the best settings for your PC in DX11, what we want to do now is switch into DX12 and test and see what our results are. So we'll switch into DX12, hit apply and save. Who will get the little pop up? We need to restart. So again, you want to document all of your findings, either take a screenshot or write them down. So we are now using DX12 as opposed to DX11. So now let's take a look at the FPS counter over here on the right hand side and we can see some big changes um, compared to DX11. Now again, every system will be different and your system may operate better in DX12 than DX11. The first thing to take notice of is our frame rate. It has dropped significantly from the 72 or 70 FPS that we were getting in DX11. The next thing that you'll see is we are lit up in red and we are no longer in a green situation in our FPS counter. The limited by, we are now limited by main thread and it is not switching back and forth between GPU and CPU. Our main thread has increased from the measly 11, 12 milliseconds all the way up to almost 20 milliseconds. It's jumping from 15 to 20 milliseconds. And our GPU latency is between 11 and 12 milliseconds. The last part of this, if we take a look at the GPU VRAM, we've almost doubled the amount of VRAM usage on our GPU. So for those of you who have 6 gig or 8 gig of GPU memory, this may not be a good option for you. But again, every system reacts differently, so I always recommend to try everything, which is why I'm doing this here for you today. All right, so that's going to finish us up for today's video. If you have tried out this technique, please let me know your system specs and your settings down below in the comments section, as this may help some other users. If you have any questions about what we went over today, please also leave those down below. If you enjoyed today's content and found it useful, make sure to hit that subscribe, tick on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. To all my flight simmer friends around the world, keep the blue side up, and we will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching, everybody.